Reading with your kids. Hola, ni hao, konnichiwa, assalamu alaikum, shalom, mahaba, muni muni wanji, namaste, jambo, bienvenidos. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reedville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so honored and so thrilled that you're joining us in our mission to help all families grow closer through reading. Please be sure to tell all of your family and friends about the show, your kids' teachers, their principal, their librarian, and also please be sure to subscribe to the show on the iHeartRadio app, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher Radio, wherever you find your podcast. Our guest today is Christina Christian Siwi. She's here to celebrate I Believe in Me, Do You Believe in You? I am so very excited about this episode of the podcast for so many different reasons. First off, Christina is an amazing guest. You are going to love her. You're going to love learning about the inspiration for I Believe in Me, Do You Believe in You? You're also going to love learning about what it was like being contestant on the first season of American Idol and coming in in the top 10. She was at number six. Amazing. You're also... I'm also excited about this episode because, uh, well, this is the Reading With Your Kids birthday. We turned six years old today. Can you believe it? The Reading With Your Kids podcast debuted on February 14th, 2017, six years ago. And this is episode 1658. Oh, man, if somebody had told me six years ago that, that we'd be publishing this podcast for for six years, that, that we'd produce 1,658 episodes, that we we would be nominated for the iHeartRadio Best Kids and Family Podcast Award, that we'd win an 88 Gold Award, that we'd have amazing guests like our guest today, Christina Christian Siwi, that we've had guests like LeVar Burton and Jane Yolen and Mark Brown and Jerry Spinelli and Katie Camello and so many others. I wouldn't have believed it. I would have told you that that was my dream, but it's come true. Thanks in such a large part to you. I really appreciate all the support that you've given the podcast. I really support all the love that you've given me. I I value the friendships that I've made. I, I, I so, I'm so thankful for the many, many people who've been part of our team over the years. So many amazingly talented uh, college students have interned on the show. Of course, I'm so grateful for the support from my beautiful and amazing wife, I want to give a special thank you to uh, somebody who's been with the podcast from the very beginning, my amazing associate producer, Fatima Khan. If you have a moment, I would love to hear what your favorite episode of the podcast has been. You can let us know on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids, at reading with your kids on Instagram, and at Jedly Magic on Twitter. And of course, you can go to our website, readingwithyourkids.com, click the contact button at the top of the page, and let us know who your favorite guest has been, and let us know who you would like to hear in a future episode of the podcast. I am so very, very excited. Joining us right now from Southern Florida, our guest is here today to celebrate her brand new picture book. It's called I Believe in Me. Do you believe in you? Please welcome to the show, Christina Christian Siwi. Hey, Christina, how are you? Good. Thank you for having me on. I'm really excited to have you on. I love the title of your book, I Believe in Me, Do You Believe in You? Thank you. Yeah. It, it's great how it started. I, my eldest son, who's now 17, he just turned 17 Christmas Eve. He was about two and a half and he was starting out in like, you know, peewee sports and starting to do things. And I wanted to make sure that I was able to build confidence in him just as my parents had built confidence in me. And so I wrote this poem for him, which 14 years later, <laughs> we, you know, finished it. And, um, and I found a great illustrator and completed the book, but I've used the message with my eldest son and my two other kids. And I'm really hoping that it provides a, a way for other children to build a narrative of belief in themselves. I, you know, that is so, 
very, very important. Just the idea that um, building up your, your kids' confidence in them to know that they can achieve amazing things. I think it's super important. I look back at my life and a lot of the things that I've been able to do, you know, why did I go for them, right? Why wasn't I afraid? And it really comes down to like, my parents always told me that like, if if there was anything I wanted to do, I could do it as long as I worked hard for it. And I believed in myself. So those, those two pillars are truly what has allowed me to take risks, have allowed me to go, you know, go audition for American Idol, has allowed me to, to travel the world and not be afraid Um, or not succumb to fear because I think fear is natural and that's completely fine. But to give your, to have the confidence to push through anyway, I think is, is really what's needed for not only dream, you know, going after your dreams, but just living, you know, daily life and, and going through the the complex things that life provides to us. So that's, that's my hope. That's, I'm, I'm hoping truly that this, this book is able to impact other children. Like it has truly impacted my children. Yeah. Now it, it might've, you know, just kind of crossed your ear and it might have made your ear perk up when Christina said that she auditioned, she auditioned for American Idol. She didn't tell you she was a top 10 finalist in the first season. So you, you did more than just audition. You really went for it. And, and after you got into the audition and, listen to Simon say something nasty about you or other people, I'm sure, uh, you were still able to go on and, 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 and compete on that very huge stage. Yes, very huge and very new stage mm-hmm. um, for for the audience as well as like for us, right? Like it was a, a brand new format. It was just so different in every, you know, these are, these are live shows in front of, you know, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people. And regardless of how you felt that day, if you didn't have enough sleep, if your throat was hurting, if, you know, you were sick, which I was during the show, like you had to get up there and perform anyway. Mm -hmm. Right. So there was a lot of lessons that we learned through Idol. It was a blast. The tour that we had afterwards was amazing, you know, to, to live a dream of, of performing in arenas, you know, around the country, 30 different arenas around the country sold out arenas. That was amazing to have the lifelong friendships that we have it was really like a fraternity or a sorority thing, right? Like I, I feel like Idol was like, is how we rushed. <laughs> that was us rushing. And it taught us all so much about ourselves, you know, and truly what we're capable of and really young, mm-hmm. you know, I was 21 years old. So it yeah. was really a new adventure that I, I grew so much from. Yeah. How do we, we're, we're living in a time right now where um, the, the country is really, divided and it seems like people can't have a discussion with each other it's like i'm on this team you're on that team and uh, a lot of what kids are hearing these days is that the life's unfair and this is against you and and there are lots of injustices and there are a lot of issues but how do we recognize those and, and encourage kids to, to work to solve those while still being positive, understanding that, yep, that, that you're, you're going to get bumps and scrapes and not everybody's going to be your fan, but you can still get out there and you can still do it and succeed. You know, I look back, I'm first generation American. Both my parents were immigrants. Um, so I think that in and of itself you know, for what they taught me was there's always going to be people against you. You're, you know, there's always going to be tough situations and you have to realize that they exist. Cause like you said, injustices are real. That happens. It's going to happen to everybody. Right. Um, but you have to remember, and that comes back to, to my, my book is, and that's where I got that message is really from my parents. Like you have to believe that you can do something. That regardless of somebody getting in your face, regardless of somebody trying to stop you, that you have what it takes to succeed and you have to put in the work. So I think it's just, you know, I'm not necessarily a forever optimist, Mm -hmm. but I do, I, I do look at the reality and I say, you know what, things can happen in a good way. Things can happen in a bad way. And I choose to believe that they're going to happen in the good way. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and if life knocks you down, which I've been in situations, I didn't win American Idol. I was sick during Idol, right? I failed on a large stage, but 
I was able to say, okay, that happened. Now, how do we get back up and keep going? Right. Mm -hmm. And that I think is just because of the belief in self. Okay. I failed on that, but that doesn't mean I'm going to fail again, or it doesn't mean I'm going to fail at something else. And I think that comes down to the narrative of belief and why I felt so strongly, especially during COVID to finally put this out because I saw it help my children. Right. Like I, I know that it helped me and I know that going through any struggle and to overcome any struggle, you need to have that belief in yourself mm -hmm. because there'll always be naysayers, mm -hmm. right? There'll always be people, even sometimes in your close circle mm -hmm. that don't want you to succeed, but you have to believe that you will succeed in mm -hmm. order for you to do it. You know, one of the things that, that occurred to me as you were speaking and talking about failing on American Idol and the kind of thought that jumped into my head was fail there were thousands of people auditioned for that show and you get to number 10 you didn't hit number one and that's what you wanted so you failed in that sense but wow you succeeded in so many other ways how do we how do we help our kids kind of see that that no we're not always going to hit the home run we're not always going to you know be, land in first place but there's value in the struggle and there's great value in coming in second or fifth or 10th or 100th as long right. as we're out there trying. And I think that that's super important I, um, for me. And I, and I use the word fail because I don't think that there's anything wrong mm -hmm. with failing, right? I think you learn through failure because my goal going into that competition was to win, right? So I might not have attained my goal, but as you said, like, I was able to perform on a large stage. I was able to make relationships with many different people. I was able to, to be, because I um, got sick and was rushed to the hospital at six, number six, and that's when I had to stop doing the show. So I was still able to get that far. I was still able to get a contract. I was still able to do other things. So I might not have had, you know, I might not have had the, or, or attained the goal that I had coming in, mm -hmm. but being able to look and see like, oh, all these different things, all these different opportunities came out of that desire, that want, or that failure, right, of the first goal, I now have all these other doors that are now opened. Mm -hmm. And I think it's believing that, you know, one door, like you, people hear it all the time, one door might close, but other doors open, right? And it's up to you whether or not you're going to go through those other doors. Yeah, yeah. Right? So Absolutely. One of the things in, in the podcast has been on, we're, we're approaching our sixth anniversary in February. Uh, one of the, th the themes that we talked about a lot when we first launched was that there are a lot of parents who are determined not to allow their kids to get any scrapes or bumps or bruises and they kind of bubble wrap their kids. I don't see that as much now, but um, certainly when, when we say to our kids, I believe in you. We're also saying, I think, to our kids that I believe in you and I know even if you fall down, you're going to be able to get up. Yes. Because you're going to fall down. Like if anybody can, <laughs> that's inevitable, right? Like we are not going to win at everything. We are not going to have an easy life always, right? Their life is filled with ups and downs. And that is definitely something that we tell our kids. Um, but you have to have the belief that you can get back up, right? Mm -hmm. And having that belief allows you to look for help. Having that belief allows you to look for different ways that you can continue moving on, right? Um, because it is, it is hard raising children where you don't want to see them go through the same pains you did. Right. And I, I look at my parents. I remember my dad was like, you know, you, and he still said, you do better than I did and your kids will do better than you did. Right. But they still have to have challenges because challenges teach us so much about ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I try as much as it's hard, like it hurts to see your kids have a challenge. It hurts to see them fail or, you know, not hit a goal, but I try my best and my husband, you know, we try our best to allow them to, to feel it. Mm -hmm. And once you feel it, you're able to then move on. Like, don't run away from that feeling. It's okay to not do well. It's okay for it to hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. 
um, but know that you don't have to sit in the hurt for a long time. You yeah. start building a plan and another vision to do, to go on to your next adventure. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned that that this book came out of a poem that you wrote for your son 17 or so years ago. And so I'm imagining when you heard this when he was a, a, a youngster that is, oh, yeah, mommy, I believe in me and get all enthusiastic. But uh, I, I'm a dad of, of a my, – my kids are now adults, so I kind of went through that middle school phase with them. And were there ever times when, you know, you reminded your son that, hey, I believe in you. Do you believe in – you know, do you believe in yourself yeah. like I do? Uh, did they ever came back to you like, yeah, I don't want to hear it anymore? Oh, of course. Of course. I mean, they're kids, right? Like that's going to happen. But then it's, it's funny because, um, not funny, but my eldest son just took his SATs and he had a, a score in mind. And I said to him and he was freaking out, right? Like I said, you have to believe in yourself that you can do it. Like no one else can, but you remember that. And he's like, and then the conversation, it was like a 30 minute conversation that had gone on beforehand. And he's coming up with every excuse on why it might not work. And I'm like, stop, stop. You got to believe that you can do it. And then the conversation ended just like that. He just, he just went quiet. And then two days later, he took the SAT. Well, three weeks later, when we got the results, he scored the exact score. All that right. he needed. And we talked about it again. So sometimes like in other times of his life, you're not always going to win. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's, you then go back to those moments and you say, if you didn't believe in yourself, right. In that moment, you know, would that have happened? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Right. You wouldn't have pushed yourself when you were stuck on a tough problem. Right. You would have just given up, but it really comes down to that will, that narrative when they can go back and, and replay that through tough times or through tough situations, it helps them get a little bit further along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious as somebody who's um, been on stage and entertained thousands, millions of people with, with your music, how is it different now that you're entertaining, inspiring thousands of kids with your books? You're not going to have that instant feedback from the audience cheering you on. Is is it different? How, how and and how so? Oh, it's it's completely different, right? Because again, like you just said, I'm not receiving the instant feedback. Although I love, like, I get pictures and texts from parents, and they'll you know send me. And I've seen my my nephew. He starts reading it, like, I believe I can jump so high, and he's doing it, and he's all excited. But it's believing that the message works, mm -hmm. right? Believing that the message will impact because I have to look back. I'm like, okay, that message that my parents gave me, it worked for me, right? That message that I gave my kids through the, the poem originally when I wrote it, it worked for them and it continues to work for them. So I believe that it's going to work for other kids, right? Um, and I love like the whole reading with kids because even thinking back, like my husband was so he, he would read with our, our kids every day, like our eldest son, every night they would read together and how impactful that is because that you're building that narrative, whatever story you're providing to them, it soaks into their, their essence of who they are, you know, and they take that with them. So not just this story, other stories, you know, that they hear. So I think it's, I think it's even more impactful, um, to be able to do that. And it is very similar. I will tell you like the, the book, the, um, the way it's written, it's written in song. Cause I write, you know, right. I used to write music and I, so it's very melodic mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're reading it. Um, and I'm hoping that that will always, you know, remain in the children's minds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and I'm glad you brought that up. We do have a lot of authors or and aspiring authors who listen to the show. And I guess one thing that I'm, I'd just like to remind authors if, is if you're writing a rhyming book, it should feel like a song in a melody. And if you're kind of shoehorming the rhymes in, it ain't working. That, you know, rework it. Make it sound like a song. Uh, yeah. Yes. That it's, and that's, it's, that's how I write, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and which is also nice because somebody had asked me, you know, do you miss writing music? And I said, 
I do. I do miss, you know, putting a full song together, but I said, this is kind of like the same thing for me, Mm -hmm. right? Like finding that flow and finding that melody. So, yeah. Well, I guess that's the, the, the question is this something not to replace writing music, but is this, uh, you know, a new chapter in your life is, uh, have you, uh, you've written, I, I believe in me. Do you believe in you? Is this the first of many children's books that are going to come from you? So I do have a second one um, that right now I already wrote, and it's with my illustrator who I wrote, who illustrated my first book, who I absolutely adore. Um, it's, her name's Ross Webb. She, I think she's from Ireland. She lives in Ireland right now. But I did, um, I wrote my second book, and we're currently working on those, the illustrations. And it's about happiness. It's about, it's called Little Cub's Happiness Quest. And it's about what does happiness mean to each person, right, each individual. And I think that's important because I think when you're younger, a lot of times in the media and, you know, movies that we watch, you feel that happiness is X, Y, and Z, right? But that's not reality, right? Different things make different people happy. Mm -hmm. And so that's what in that book is what I'm trying to, to teach children. Like you can, happiness might be to you is playing your video games. Another person might be happy you know, rolling around on the grass and that's what gives them their joy and not to dim anybody else's light to find your own and, and have fun with what gives you and fills your soul. Yeah. You, you mentioned it earlier on that you're very, tend to be very optimistic and you, you believe in yourself and you're giving this, this message out to kids and you're writing a book about happiness and you may be like me in that you annoy people with your uh, enthusiasm and your positivity. I know I, I annoy my wife and my niece so much. But how do you think we can in, in, instill it? Because I think there's some people who are kind of born with you know that kind of outlook on life. But I also think it's something that we can choose. That we can choose to look at failure as an opportunity. We can choose to look at the glass is half full. And there's all sorts of studies that show that people who live gratefully are happier and healthier. How, how, how do you think we can help our kids kind of embrace that positive lifestyle? By being an example of it. You know, they might turn away from it for a period of time just because they're kids and like, oh, your parent, my parents do this, but they come back. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've seen it with my eldest son, like, he went through a period like from 11 to say 14. And then all of a sudden he was just like, you're right, mom. (laughs) And he, he just came back. And I, I think being that example, giving them that blueprint is most important. I I don't know if it's just an eldest son, 11 to 14 thing, but it certainly happened here (laughs) too. And I'm really happy I was optimistic because I knew it would end at some point. And, um, That's what I have to keep telling myself. I'm like, this isn't going to last forever. <laughs> so now moving on to my middle son, who is in that same time frame, I'm like, all right, well, you're all this, you know, mm-hmm. Caden came around. And I will say my eldest helps out so much too with our youngest in, in terms of like the way they think as well to remind them like, yes, this actually works. What mom and dad are saying is actually true you know and that's that's such a benefit as well because his he believes his the narrative right so Mm -hmm. now he's making sure that he's reconfirming to his younger brother and sister that it's it's accurate yeah i i don't mean to put you on the spot but you shared a lot about your experience uh with american idol and it's become such um uh such a part of our culture here in the states and i guess around the world um you shared the, the the struggles and the successes you had. Was there any funny, crazy story from from that time that you can um, that you can share with us? It's been twenty one years. The statute of limitations has run on most <laughs> crimes. <laughs> ah, um, I we had a really fun time when we were shooting, and we all ended up jumping in the pool with our clothes on. So that was a blast Um, because a lot of times we were like waking up really early to like do, you know, TV and radio and we didn't get to just chill and be ourselves. And, you know, we just had this time where we're just like, we're going to, you know, jump in the pool. And we did. And we just had fun. Um, We used to eat at In-N-Out Burger a lot. (laughs) We didn't 
our season, we didn't have like the private chef or anything like that. Um, I will say there was one time where we stood up for ourselves because they wanted to to film us in the house Mm -hmm. and all of us banded together and we're like, that's not happening. And so we shut, (laughs) we shut that down. Um, so that was neat. I'm trying to think of like anything that without, you know, breaking any confidence. Yeah. So you have to think about that or confidentiality or privacy. Um, but no, those were some of our, some of our great moments and tour was amazing. Mm -hmm. Like going on tour we, we just had a blast. We really together had a blast. We just got together, actually. Kelly wasn't able to. She was dealing with some family stuff. But um, the nine of us all did a show together um, on Justin Guarini's show a couple of years ago during COVID, mm. which was new. cool just to get together and talk about the things that went on and talk about where we are in our lives. And Jim, who was, um, I think he was 10th. He was, he, yes, he was 10th. He works with me at my company oh, as wonderful. a recruiter in tech. So I still get to like, you know, talk to a lot of them. I haven't talked to Kelly in probably two or three years. I did something for her show. I think it was two years, two or three years ago. Um, but Tamira and I are still very close. I've talked to Justin recently. Um, Nikki, of course, passed away from our season, which was, which was devastating. She, she way too young. Mm-hmm. Um, but just talk to RJ and, and EJ and Ryan Starr and, you know, and AJ. So it's been really nice to keep in contact and have that bond for all these years. That's wonderful. Well, you know, typically I would ask that, you know, if what kind of advice could you give to a parent that who has a kid who aspires to be a, a, a professional singer? But I think you've already shared that with us to give them, <laughs> instill that confidence in them that they can do it, that you believe in them. And now the challenge is, do you believe in yourself? Great. Yeah. That, I mean, that would be my advice for sure. Yeah. That's, see, I do that mind reading thing on stage. And I'm <laughs> you got it. I mean, I, I really do hope, and, and I, I hope that parents really enjoy this book. The feedback I've gotten has been wonderful. One, there was a mom that said, I finally have what I need to have this conversation to start this conversation with mm-hmm. my kids that, you know, and you, I didn't think about it as being a difficult conversation because I had the blueprint, right? My parents had that conversation, but I didn't realize how many people didn't know how to have the conversation with their children. So I really, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing this impact lives and, and I, you know, I'd love for parents to definitely give me that feedback. They can give it to me on my Instagram. Um, Even with the reviews of the book have been really good with feedback that way as well. And, it's it's nice to know, like, I don't get the instant feedback for singing, but to get that feedback that it is helping, you know, definitely makes me feel like what I what I did and what I put out, um, there was a reason behind it. Yeah. And you mentioned Instagram. So let's tell everybody where they can connect with you. Oh, so my Instagram is B underscore the underscore light 21. Be the light. Um, and then if you want to purchase a copy of my book, you can get it on my website, which is www.ibelieveinmedoyou.com. And you can purchase the paperback and the hardcover. And you can also get the, the paperback on Amazon. We've had a really fun and inspiring time speaking with the author of I Believe in Me, Do You Believe in You? Christina Christian Siwi. Christina, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Please be sure to join us for the next episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast. Our guest will be Samantha Hawkins. She'll be here to celebrate my mommy marches. That's the next episode of the podcast. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so wonderful. Of course, we'll start by thanking our guest, Christina Christian Siwi. Please be sure to check out I Believe In Me. Do you believe in you? I want to thank my amazing team, Fatima Khan, Rory Grady, Jordan Saley, Stephanie Davila, Will Cheever, Cassandra Massonet. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. Most of all, we all want to thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. And as always, thank you so very much for taking the time to make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.